I'm sure you're all well aware of the existence of the immune system, that personal cellular defense force that protects us from pathogens that are threatening to infect you and make you sick. Perhaps you also have a suspicion that there are differences in your immune system. And while this has a lot to do with your physiological condition, it can have a lot to do with your genes. And this is what I'm interested in, is how the genes of your immune system vary in population. This can give you an idea of the immunological capability of individuals, and as a whole, give you an idea of the immunological capacity of a population. But how do we measure this immunological capacity? Well, to put it simply, the immune system is complex. There is the adaptive and innate arms, there is humoral and cellular immunity, there is feedback loops and complement cascades. It's almost impossible to calculate every single immune gene involved in this pathway. But there are some key genes that work at the interface between the host and the pathogen that we can look at. These genes are typically cell surface receptors, and these are the ways in which cells communicate with one another. One of these families here is the MHC. And this, is, this can be found in all dog vertebrates, so you can find them in sharks and frogs and snakes and apes and platypuses and, of course, humans. And in humans, we found more than a thousand MHC gene variants um, in humans. But what does that mean? What is the difference between this MHC gene variant and the next? So let's talk about the MHC. The MHC hangs out on the surface of the cell. When the cell is infected, it finds a little fragment of that pathogen in a binding pocket. This is recognized by an immune cell as being a sign that the cell is infected, and bang, we get the deployment of an immune response. The ability of this MHC molecule to bind the pathogen is determined by the properties of the proteins in the binding pocket. These proteins are in turn determined by DNA sequence. So when you have different DNA sequences, you'll have different binding properties in the pocket, which will give you resistance to different pathogens. So when you think about a population as a whole, it's a very, very good thing to have lots of different variants, because this means you might have resistance in a population. But when we think of endangered species, these populations have often gone through population declines. When you're losing individuals from a population, you lose genes. So maybe in, in the example of endangered species, we have this. We don't have many different gene variants. So perhaps we're lacking important resistance genes. And if we have an emerging disease, perhaps the population is susceptible. So this is a way where we can use immune genes to help inform important conservation management decisions. And if you give me five minutes, I will expand into some species, including this very, very cute museum folks. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. I just realised why I was supposed to, uh, why, why I was asked to do this, because all of your talks have been really, really interesting. I'm, I'm a zoologist to start out with, and this, I mean, and, and also the, the link and fear. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, the jury, please. Uh, okay, thank you for a nice presentation. Uh, I really think your slides were really refreshing. I love them. Uh, it's oh, but I like the style you have. It's not that often that you see handmade things like that, and it's refreshing. So I like them a lot. Uh, and you also managed to put quite a lot of information into your presentation, and quite, I would say, for average people, uh, tough message, but it went through. I think they got it. So, so I think you did it in a good way. Uh, however, some words might, might have been a little bit too difficult for, for them. Yeah. So, good job. Yeah, I agree once more. Uh, uh, sounds like I'm paid by the <laughs> uh, But uh, yeah, I really love the, the sort of low-tech approach. I mean, it's, uh, a lot of people often get a lot of efforts into making PowerPoints with a lot of uh, high-tech solutions. But it's, in the end, it's really about the story you want to tell and how you tell it. And, uh, to me, uh, being the uh, 
used to read it here. Uh, right, I didn't understand everything scientifically. But that doesn't really matter. I, you came to the conclusion that I really understood. And perhaps uh, maybe two many slides. You, you could feel a, a cup full of Darwin's there, but as a whole, I, I will enjoy it. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, I experienced your, your energy as like a, a kind of uh, shy. Uh, and I would uh, grab your space when you have an audience. So if, if you would uh, redo it, uh, maybe you could. I, I know it's hard to fit all the info in two minutes, of course, but uh, when you have an audience, uh, play with them. Um, so take, take your space. That would be uh, even more uh, nice to see. Uh, but otherwise, I, I think that was very good. The, 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 the so there were so many um, uh, information bits on here, so I, I didn't know who, who to watch. So I tried to watch, watch you more, but uh, and then I watched this. So, so may, maybe, um, I don't know how to mix that. I'm, I'm not professional at this, but uh, <laughs> I would like to see more of you and uh, the place of, of uh, the info. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, now for the voting part. You ready? Please. Uh, vote. And we got to see. Turn and get an eight, an eight, and a six. <laughs> 